Hello guys, it's me. So before we get started, I just wanted to say that this is going to be a multi-part original SCP story that will be shared here as well as on Wattpad and Fiction Press if you would like to read it for yourselves. I am writing a lot more now and I have several stories in the work, so stick around to the end if you want to hear more information about that. Anyways, thanks guys. I escaped from a facility that contains monsters. Prologue. I would like to believe that I was a simple man, but I guess most of us want to believe that. In fact, I was someone you wouldn't want to talk to in a crowd, and really, that's how I liked it. The story I'm going to tell is not one that I think you'll believe, in fact, I'm still coming to terms with it myself. You see, no matter how normal we believe things are, there's just some unexplainable shit out there. I don't know why I'm writing this, or who I'm writing to for that matter. It's just nice to have everything written out, I guess. I don't know where to start, but if I was going to start somewhere, I guess I would start from the beginning, right? After all, I don't know what I'll forget next. I've already forgotten so much, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. Well, to start, my name is Kenneth Brown Jr. At least, I think I'm a junior. I was named after my grandfather, not my dad. I think that technically makes me the second, but whatever. I've been filling out junior on all my documents for all of these years. I was born in Ohio in 1985, though when I was old enough to walk, we moved to Nebraska and I attended college in North Carolina, though I dropped out and moved back to Nebraska to work construction with my dad when my girlfriend, now wife, had our first son. Growing up in our home was pretty typical. I had an older brother, though he's no longer with us. My little sister and her family lives in Idaho, though they were getting ready to move the last time I talked to them. Luckily, thanks to the help of my family, my wife and children never really had any major struggles. My mother and father made sure my kids always had full bellies and definitely gave us a lot of advice and support as we got our little family situated. My wife worked as a waitress while I continued to work in construction since I didn't have enough time to return to school. I always said that I would, but it never went past thought, as rent and diapers and clothing and food and so many other things took priority. I didn't really know what I would go back to school for anyway. Don't get me wrong, we weren't the most well off, but we definitely didn't struggle. Over time, my wife eventually got promoted to a manager, which definitely helped as I transitioned to a foreman, which kept me away from home a lot longer than I liked. Many people always said I had an intimidating appearance, but that's mainly because of my large size. In being six foot seven and a decent weight with a bushy beard and a motorcycle I rode on the weekends meant people typically avoided me outside of work. I'd be lying if I said I didn't take advantage of this, although I doubt I could hurt a fly, being the big guy in the room definitely had its advantages. I was content with my life, my oldest was getting ready to start fourth grade and my youngest finishing kindergarten. I don't know when it happened, I can't even imagine what that day looked like, but something was taken from me. Not just my memory, but it was something even more intimate with my being. I tried to grasp how long it's been, but it's so far gone, so far in the maw that there's no way I could find it. All I could remember were the dreams, the inky black fingers reaching out from the darkness, bloody hands grabbing me, twisting my mind, pulling at my sanity. I never thought dreams were so powerful or important. I remember as a kid, I had night terrors and I would go to my mom and dad and they would tell me everything was going to be all right. And like any child, I believed them. It doesn't matter how realistic a dream is. It's gone when you wake up, but they were always there. I believe dreams are just fabrications caused by a reckless mind. I remember it so vividly, which is strange for me, especially. It all started with a dream, an unknown voice clawing into my mind. It was kind and worried, and it left me feeling assured as my parents did, but still, I was so confused, so lost. You're okay. You're okay. Your heart's 
racing so hard, I swear I can hear it from here. And trust me, that is pretty impressive. The voice said to me, concern dripped from every word. I didn't know who it was that was speaking to me. I didn't know where the voice was coming from or how I could hear it. I tried to turn my head or move my body, but all that was around me was darkness. My heart began to race. It felt like it was going to come from my chest. I couldn't tell if it was a dream or reality. Still, honestly, I don't know. All I could do was feel an uneasy calm, something in the back of my mind telling me that I should run, but my body wouldn't respond as if we were two separate entities. And, yeah, the lights, they're off. You kind of did that. If you don't remember how, I can't help you with that. I think it'll be better if I introduce myself again. My name is Jake, and no, I'm not that asshole from State Farm. I know that you have a couple of questions. You most likely want to know where you are, how I'm talking to you. Well, all questions come in time. Just know I am on your side. You're in a secret facility that experiments on people like us. They're going to try and tell you lies about where you are, about how you got here, about your family, what happened to them. The lies, Kenny. I want to tell you so much, but it would be best that you didn't tell the doctors about our little talks. They'll erase your memories again. Oh yeah, you're asleep. That's why you can't move. I know that you wanted to know. Trust me. I'm gonna get us out of here, okay? I have to go now. I'll speak to you soon. Bye, Kenny. I don't know why I believed that voice. It honestly sounded like I'd known it for a long time, but this was the first time I heard it or at least the first time I remember, maybe I just wanted to believe in something. As if, on cue, as soon as Jake stopped talking, I woke up in my bed. I sat up right away, sweat poured down my face as if I had just run a quarter mile. I thought to myself that, that dream, why was it so cold yet familiar? I looked around my bedroom, unable to see anything in the complete darkness. It had me on edge, unless the power was out, the light from the street lamp outside would shine through our window and illuminate part of the room. My wife and I would always be annoyed by it, but it didn't matter how thick our curtains were, we could at least see the silhouettes of our furniture in the darkness. I couldn't put my finger on it, but something didn't feel right about the room. The air felt stale and dead and colorless which is not something my wife would ever allow. Between the burning of candles and all of those weird plug-in things she always had in the walls, our house smelled like a mixture of lilacs and whichever candle she decided to burn for the day, usually either vanilla bean or pumpkin spice, her two favorite scents. Not only that, but it hit me, a terrifying silence, which at this time of night I would normally be thankful for. My wife always told me I slept like a rock and I didn't move, I barely made a sound, and she was the exact opposite. She was probably the loudest snore I've ever heard. Over the years, I've gotten used to it, but on the occasion, it would wake our son in the other room. Yeah, it was that loud. However, rather unsettlingly, that night it was dead silent, eerily so, as if I was in a quiet room with padded walls. I reached my hand over to wake her and end the lull and hear her voice. I knew she would be angry that I woke her up so late, but I was desperate and I wanted to hear something familiar. For whatever reason, at this point it felt like I was grasping at straws, I felt like I was at my wit's end. As I ran my hand across the bed, it suddenly hit a cold wall instead of a person. That was the last straw. I needed to know where I was. I was not in my house. Something was wrong. I started to think about how I got here. Was I abducted? Is this prison? A million questions rushed into my mind all at the same time, and I struggled to even function. I didn't want to believe it was foul play. Maybe I was on a business trip and I just forgot. I tried to rationalize things in my head, but I really had no idea why I was there. Then it hit me. Maybe I would remember if I turned the lights on. Then things could make a lot more sense. 
I scooted to the side of my bed and placed my exposed feet on the floor. A chill hit me as the cold concrete greeted my unprepared form. This definitely wasn't right. My room would be carpet, not tile, or whatever this is. Panic starts to set in as my heart rate continued to accelerate. The room felt like it was closing in on me with more unfamiliar textures. I stand up and follow my bedside to a wall. My arms stretched out trying to make sure I didn't run into anything. My breathing became more erratic as my mind went awry with new possibilities. The thought of my family waking up in an equally strange location caused me to panic even more. It was so surreal, I was starting to think that it was a dream. It couldn't be real. The last thing I remembered before that moment was going to bed with my wife after putting my youngest to bed. There was nothing out of the ordinary, no loud sounds, no scuffling with mask assailants. I struggled to explain my situation. Was I drugged? Julie! Julie, honey, where are you? I wrestled from my dry throat as I continued my campaign through the darkness. I said once again, but louder, only hearing my own echo off the walls. I continued to walk and call their names, not just my wife but also my children, until I came to what felt like a door. I did my best to survey it, but without any light, it was difficult. Still, I searched for any kind of doorknob or button or anything I could use to open it. I didn't have any luck. I wanted out, so I started hitting the door as hard as I could, yelling out for my wife or my kids, hoping someone would answer. What I got was completely unexpected. Without any warning, the lights flipped on in the room, blinding me as my eyes failed to adjust. I'm only barely able to get my bearings before the door slid open with a loud click and the scraping of metal. Arms abruptly grabbed me and forced me to the ground while I was still disoriented, which surprised me because like I said, I'm a pretty big guy. That's when I knew without any doubt that this wasn't right. All of my fears were realized. I was in a prison. What was going on? I struggled against the men for a second, trying to get them off of me, but the more I struggled, the more pressure they put on me until I couldn't even breathe. Well guys, if you liked the video, please like, tell your friends about it. Over the course of the next few days, you can expect a video from me every single day. This isn't the normal release schedule. Of course, I don't really have one of those, but I do have a lot of content that I've been working on and I want to get out there, but I'm just literally busy all of the time. I would like to do this more often and more regularly, but the only way I can do that is with your support. So follow me on all forms of social media, you know, tell me that I'm doing great, tell me I'm doing terrible, tell me something, uh, how I can improve. But uh, if you do find me on social media, I don't really post too often, but that's mainly because I don't have friends yet. Also, uh, expect to see more stories from me that aren't SCP related. Uh, as well as a lot more SCP related content. I got a lot of both of them coming out. Anyways, I'm out. Talk to you later. Or see you later. Or be you later.